From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Good day and welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Monsignor Sam Bianco. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from three donors. The first is the Sosa family from Edmonton, Alberta for Leo and Marianne's wedding anniversary, their son Raymond's birthday in memory of their mother Victoria Lachia, and in thanksgiving for blessings received. The second are Felix and Elzira de Souza from Kingston, Ontario, for the deceased members of the de Souza and de Sa families, and Dr. Alexandra Furtato, and for the special intentions of the de Souza of Onseca and Stein families. And the third is a gift from the National Catholic Broadcasting Council in memory of my brother Donald Bianco. My brother died one year ago today. I was privileged to, to be with him, his son and daughter, Alicia and Andrew, and my sister, uh, Marianne, and brother-in-law, Bruce, uh, when he died. We were there for the last five hours uh, of his life. On, on behalf of uh, the Bianco, Carey, and Mullick family, we want to extend our thanks and gratitude to the members of the NCBC for the gift of this Mass. Indeed, we thank all the donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family, we seek the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Beloved, while the promise of entering God's rest is still open, let us take care that none of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For indeed, the good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest just as God has said, as in my anger I swore they shall not enter my rest, though his works were finished at the foundation of the world. For in one place it speaks about the seventh day as follows, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place it says, they shall not enter my rest. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one may fall through such disobedience as theirs. The word of the Lord. coming generation 
in the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might. Do not forget, do not forget the works of the Lord. The next generation shall rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Do not forget, do not forget, that they should not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a man who was paralyzed, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man who was paralyzed, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the one who was paralyzed, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, stand up, take your mat and go to your home. The man stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them 
so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Thank you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Son, your sins are forgiven. Blasphemy is not very common in Western society anymore. It used to be. It's not common anymore, in part because I, I don't think people uh, have a deep sense or pre of the presence or awareness of God. To blaspheme is to say that one has the powers of God, or it's a way of insulting God. And um, I, I would hope that if people do blaspheme, our response not be in a violent manner, but the response of the Beatitudes. You know, in some parts of the world, that isn't the case. To blaspheme is to run a terrible risk uh, of, of, uh, of being responded to in a very, very destructive way, so that it can, in some ways, to, to take on the power of God and to assert that publicly is to run the risk in, in the past in Christianity in some cultures of, of incurring the wrath of the people. And the blasphemy today has to do with Jesus taking on two powers. The first power is, is his miraculous healing power, but the second is he takes on the power of God. When we're dealing with the power of God, we're always dealing with the power of evil and suffering, and evil and suffering have two wings to the, the first is what we would call natural evil, uh, accident in history. The, the man who was paralyzed may have tripped and fallen, had, had some sort of accident or disease that crippled him. There can also be other uh, accidents in nature. Although evolution is in many ways good, a nature is, is, is both benign and evil. If you watch any nature programs of animals, sometimes they look very good. But then you see a dog eat dog, a fittest, the survival of the fittest, and you begin to realize that not everything is good and beautiful about nature. It can, in fact, cause destruction as well as creativity. And the effort in evolution is to determine so that we don't make nature worse, but at the same time limit the natural effects of evil. That's one part of the story of evil. The other part of the story is one we need to talk about, and that's the fact of sin. Human beings, either as individuals or as a collectivity, can cause sin, harm, and pain to other people. Sometimes we do it inadvertently, sometimes by mistake. That's not a sin. But when we do it with carelessness, with a deliberate intent to hurt people, to forget the existence of other people and to be responsible to them and for them for ourselves, that moves into the realm of a conscious decision. Uh, the mayor of Toronto, Mayor Tory, some time ago said he was appalled by the number of people who didn't seem to understand how important it was to take the precautions uh, to reduce the threat of, of infection from COVID. He, 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 he was puzzled by it. What, what, didn't people understand they were being irresponsible? There's a family from a, a city just north of Toronto, Markham, where they, they make a public appeal. Uh, their dad, their father, their grandfather uh, caught the COVID. COVID, and they appealed to people. They, they show wonderful pictures of him at weddings and dances, parties and baptisms, and he's dead. And they, and they appeal to people, don't let that happen to you. Uh, that's wrong not to protect and to take care of ourselves. And uh, that, that's part of the human causation. Now, Jesus goes farther. He says there's a paralysis that's physical. The man obviously was not the cause of that. But every human being, whether he or she is a paralytic, in hospital or out of a hospital, has a certain paralysis, a certain temptation and possibility. It could be a possibility as simple as despair, of, of, of thinking that God has abandoned you to very active and concrete ways. And that's present whether one is sick or not sick. Uh, no one, save for a newly born baby, who hasn't given in to original sins. Everyone is courses through with the possibility because we're free people of, of sinning. 
And that's why Jesus brings such an extraordinary uh, word of consolation and of strength to this man. He not only releases him, if you will, from the paralysis, the physical, but any of the paralysis of bitterness, of envy, of anger, of resentment or despair that may be coursing through him. And so we have two blessings here. The first blessing is the people who use their freedom to seek and not sin. And that's the man who has faith and the people who gather together cooperatively to bring him to Jesus. I see that as an analogy to people who are working to get rid of the disease. But more vigorously present is Jesus in God. He sees the evil in us. He doesn't condemn it. He wants to heal it. He calls the man son. As he is the son of the Father, so you and I are the sons and daughters of Jesus. And he pours into his human being all the power of God. He is one like us in that he is capable and does suffer for us, but he's more than us. He carries with him the power to do the most beautiful thing in the world, uh, to forgive people who were irresponsible during the COVID, but also to restore and bring life. If there is to be praise in the world, and these people are amazed, let it be praise for people who use their freedom to help one another. Let it be praise for God who suffers with us, but God who is present in Jesus, who is more than a human being, whose God made a life alive in the world and who is in pre present in our midst. For that, we give glory and praise. Would you join with me, please? And we'll offer our prayers and petitions today to the Lord. For those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially for those asking for peace in their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who lack adequate food, housing, and shelter, for those persons with mental health challenges in their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those doctors, nurses, and care workers, and scientists who are working so hard to continue uh, to seek and to develop the vaccines necessary uh, to reduce and cease this illness, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all those who live in isolation and are alone and think that people and God have abandoned them, that God's mercy, that good people be with them, comfort and strengthen them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our take a moment, please, to pray for our own personal intentions, for the people for whom we love and care for, for those united with us in prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God, you have given us freedom. May we use it wisely, but most especially, you are present among us as the God who forgives, who restores, who brings back to life anything that is broken, paralyzed, or wounded. We are grateful for your presence. We do this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all souls. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, all the clergy and all the people of God, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed now by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.